knowing how to split up your time while you're on the job search is so overwhelming. There are so many different things that you have to be worried about doing all at the same time, it feels like. You have to rework your resume so it's impressive to employers. You have to learn the latest frameworks like Angular and React. You have to do the networking. You have to be working on your projects. You have to be making sure you're learning new things, whether it be through some online course you're taking or working with other people on new technologies and then do you spread your time out and learn a lot of different languages or do you really focus in and just learn one thing there is just so much overwhelm in this whole process and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today Back in grade school, things in math class got a little bit confusing for a while because you were learning about multiplying, dividing, subtracting, adding. But then we learned the order of operations, and we knew, based on that order of operations, what order you were going to do what in your math problems. And that made math easier. Once you got the hang of what you needed to be doing and when. When I was going through my job search process, I wish I'd had an order of operations for the job search because no matter what I was doing, if I was practicing code, I felt like I should be networking and talking to more people. If I was out there networking, talking to people, or looking for more contacts on LinkedIn, I felt like, no, I should be practicing my data structures and algorithms. It was a constant vicious circle. So how would I structure this order of operations today? If you are watching this right now and you don't have a, a resume that you feel good about sending out to employers, half of your time needs to be spent on getting your resume together. The other half of your time should be spent on your portfolio. You need to be able to prove to employers in one way or another that you have worked on projects, you have actually built some skills, you know how to put together code in a way so you can show off the skills that you have learned. I put these two things side by side because your portfolio and GitHub should be linked on your resume. Really, you should be able to put together a resume in one to three days, so this shouldn't be a lengthy process. Once you have a complete resume that you're proud of, Use that same time to make sure that you have a presence online. So make sure that your LinkedIn profile is updated. If you're gonna be using Twitter, make sure you've got that profile and a lot of connections in both social media spaces. Once you have your resume and your online presence, you can move on to the next phase where you're splitting your, your time up in four different ways. About one eighth of your time can go to actually sending out applications. Some people prefer to, instead of putting a time limit on that, like one hour out of an eight hour day, some people prefer to just have the goal of sending out one or two applications per day. The next important section to be working on is your projects. Keep practicing. Keep using your code. Working on projects is going to be more important than just following along in some online course somewhere. A piece of advice that I have heard and didn't necessarily follow is really focus your time so you are getting a deep knowledge in one area instead of spreading your time and attention all over the place and learning five different languages or frameworks. At this point you might not have your portfolio complete because maybe it was way faster to finish up your resume and get everything on LinkedIn. That's okay, use this time to work on more projects that you can add to your portfolio. You do want to have at least two projects on your portfolio to show off. So see this phase as time that you can work on getting that portfolio completed. If at some point you hit your limit on what you can host free and you don't want to pay for more hosting, run your server locally and take a screencast so you can show how this app works that you have created. You can film a demo of the app doing what it's meant to do. Add it to your readme so that when people go to visit your project, they have an idea of what the final product looked like, even if it's not live somewhere. The third place you're gonna wanna focus your time in this section where you're splitting your time up in four different ways is networking. You can go to meetups, you can spend some time on LinkedIn maybe, specifically targeting people that you want to connect with. Or if you're creating some content to post on LinkedIn or in Twitter, 
make sure that you are spending one hour, one to two hours per day trying to build your network. This networking can all be virtual if you want it to be. It can be uh, in-person meetups or virtual meetups and it can be reaching out to people on LinkedIn. The last place I think you should be spending your time is working on data structures and algorithms. It is unfortunately still a part of many interview processes, but I do not believe that it equates to finding the best engineers. You're probably familiar with a lot of the resources out there. There's Leap Code and Interview Cake and plenty of other websites that offer advice and sample questions for you to practice. I've also heard that Cracking the Interview Code is a really helpful book to help you successfully get through an algorithm interview. Sign up for something like Pramp, where you are paired up with other people trying to practice for interviews and you take turns back and forth solving problems. As you're practicing these interview problems, make sure you're also going back to review them like one day later and then three days later, and then seven days later, and then a month later, and that's going to make sure that you're actually turning that into your long-term memory and you're able to implement those solutions without having to go back and relearn from, from nothing every single time. These suggestions can absolutely be rearranged to fit better on your calendar. I wrote this out assuming you're gonna spend about eight hours a day or 40 hours per week on the job hunt but some people might only have like four hours per day or who knows what your what your commitments are. So if your time frame is different, definitely just focus on the ratios of how much time you're spending on each thing. I hope that helps ease some of the overwhelm, but of course, if you still have questions, make sure to drop them in the comment section below, or if you have found a different strategy that has been working for you, a different time frame and way to break things down during the week, let me know what's working, I'd love to hear it. So lastly, I talked a lot about working on projects as a main part of your job search. So if you are curious to hear more about what exactly I mean by working on projects, check out this video to get some more details.